The margin of error is best known from polling results. You see them all the time. In general, the rule is as follows. When the sample size increases, the margin of error decreases. You see that here. The sample size goes down from 2,000 to 96, and the margin of error increases from 2% to 10%. How can you calculate them? First of all, what does it mean? If a poll has a margin error of 2.5%, that means that if you ran that poll 100 times, asking a different sample of people each time, the overall percentage of people who responded the same way would remain within 2.5% of your original result in at least 95 of the, those 100 polls. So that's what we are going to calculate here. We calculate the margin of error based on a sample size, let's say, of 1000, and we found a result of 83% in the poll that vote for or against something. So the question is, what is your confidence level? These are usually the ranges. Most people go for 97.5 on one tail and on the other tail. And then the margin of error would be 2.33. How did we calculate it? The margin of error is calculated with this formula. The z-value, which we will discuss soon, times the square root of p times 1 minus p, or pq, divided by the number of cases. So, how do we get that? First, we need that z-value. The z-value is calculated in Excel with norms inverse. That calculates the, the extreme limit for 99% of the cases, 97%, etc. Then we calculate the standard error. So this was norms inverse. Then we calculate a standard error. That is the square root of p times q divided by n. So that is, in this case, the square root of etc. Then we calculate the margin of error. That is the z-value times the standard error. So in this case, that would be 2.76%, etc. So th there is a, a, a thumb rule to use a z-value in this formula for the margin of error. Make sure that n times p is at least 10, and n times 1 minus p is at least 10. If that's not the case, then you have to use t-values. But poles are usually for larger samples, otherwise they become very unreliable. So in, in this case, let's just change thousands in, into a sample of 100, and notice how the margin of error increases dramatically. So I'm going to undo that. And now we are going to ask the opposite question. Calculate the minimum sample size we need in order to reach a certain margin of error. So let's just ca take the case from before, 2.33, and we found a proportion in the, pop in the sample of 83%. So we use those three confidence levels again. First, we calculate the z-value, that is norms inverse, again. Then we do the following calculation. Margin of error divided by z to the power of 2. So in formula, that would be this. Then we calculate p times q, or p times 1 minus p. And finally, we calculate the number of cases. You could have solved this equation probably much quicker, but I'm doing it in several steps. So that would be pq divided by the ma margin of error divided by z to the power of 2. And this is the formula in this case, for that would basically be d16, which is already p times q, divided by c16, which is basically that one. So in this case, we, uh, we, we get different results, we, and we will see here that we, uh, we have here a minimum sample size of 998. So if you ever wonder, when you see these data, the proportion and the margin of error, what was that poll based on? It was probably based on 1,000 cases in order to get that result. For if you had a different margin of error, if you had said, no, we want a margin of error of 1.95, then 
then you would see that that pool must have included at least 1,425 people in the sample. 